Borderlands 2 is widely considered one of the best video games of all time. It's often cited as the pinnacle of looter shooters, and it's one of my favorite games, but despite all that, there are still some problems with the game. This is everything wrong with Borderlands 2. Starting off with the most obvious one, the end game balancing. Now, maybe this isn't an issue for the hardcore players out there, but most players absolutely despise the OP levels. Now, I will say this, I actually like Digistruct Peak a lot. I think that the map is awesome, and I love the concept of it but the way you progress through op levels is just atrocious first you hit level 80 which by the way you can only do if you own the commander lilith dlc now and then you enter digistruct peak once you beat it you unlock op level one you can still use the same gear for maybe three or four op levels if you got a pretty good build and then your gear starts to fall off too hard and guess what you got to do after that you got to go refarm all your gear heck if your build requires mission rewards like the pimpernel or sandhawk then you have to go reset ultimate mode and replay the story again just to get another weapon that you can use for maybe three or four more op levels before you have to do it all over again and the reward for unlocking op 10 absolutely nothing there is no increase to your loot drop chances there's no trophy there's no achievement there is nothing you lose Good day, sir! However, you do get broken versions of Hyperius and Veracitus, whose health values got borked when they added OP-10, so that's fun. Speaking of raid bosses, with those being pretty much the only endgame on Borderlands 2, it's kind of depressing to me that most players aren't able to solo them without abusing glitches. I mean, this still falls under endgame balancing, but I felt like it needed to be said. You should be able to build your Vault Hunter into a badass, and with skill and tactics, be able to beat every raid boss on your own without cheating. And sure, some people can do that, but they're like the elite 1% of players. Also, it's annoying to try and even spawn in Vermivorous. Plus, Dexidius, one of the worst raid bosses ever, requires you to drive all over a map, spend most of your Iridium to summon them, only to get a big pile of garbage loot. And why do OP-10 raid bosses drop green and white items? In what possible way does this make any sense? Terramorphous loot has become a meme on my channel because of just how sad it is to defeat a challenging in-game piece of content and get absolutely zero reward for it. Now, back Backtracking for a moment to touch a little bit more on something I said earlier, the Commander Lilith DLC introduced a lot of cool new things, new loot midget farm, giant loot midget farm, and an awesome tubby enemy farm, but it also destroyed your ability to do the OP levels at all unless you paid for this DLC. Now, you could look at that as a good thing or a bad thing, but people paid for the OP levels DLC. Now that paid content got locked behind an additional paywall. I highly doubt this was on purpose, so hopefully Gearbox sees this along with all these other suggestions and pushes out a final patch for this game the next biggest issue i and many other players have with borderlands 2 is slag and how crucial it becomes in ultimate mode and op levels with enemies constantly healing themselves in ultimate mode and beyond you need to be able to debuff them so that they take more damage your box's solution to this slag even randy pitchford himself said that slag was a horrible idea in hindsight borderlands 3 changed things up and gave you fully optional ways to debuff enemies including within the character skill trees themselves and that's a far better solution not being able to skip cutscenes in borderlands 2 is just absolutely brutal to me since the game requires you to do three story playthroughs per character to get to max level. Here's hoping that the next Borderlands game has cutscene skip and dialogue skip at launch. Speaking of three playthroughs, this is where Borderlands 3 absolutely nailed it. True Vulner mode in Borderlands 3 is fully optional for those players that want a new game plus experience with their character, but you can also just stay on normal, avoid replaying the story again, and just enable Mayhem 1 or higher, and that makes normal and True Vulner mode identical. As somebody that doesn't like unskippable stories, stuff i'd 100 percent prefer if borderlands 2 did not force me to replay the same story three times per character granted they added the level 30 normal mode skip with the commander lil's dlc but normal mode is the best part of borderlands 2 in my opinion so skipping that is an ideal instead i'd prefer an option that once you beat normal mode it asks if you'd like to skip to the end game bumps you to level 80 along with all your equipped gear and then you can get into the fun stuff but that's probably a bit of a pipe dream right there speaking of hitting max level in borderlands 2 do you guys like shooting mixed Zaffert in the face for hours because that's the go-to method for hitting max level in this game again an option that says boost my level would be dope maybe only allowed on a second character and beyond though why do enemies not just scale with you what's the point of enemies staying at level 10 and three horns divide on normal mode it basically tells you okay don't come back to this map until we force you back through the story again wonderlands actually makes the enemy scale to your level the entire time 
them, but then they failed to give us a new game plus. So yeah, I don't know, man. One day, maybe they'll piece together all the good things into one experience, <laughs> right? You guys, right? Those of you that were there from the launch of Borderlands 2 probably remember the level cap increases, but unlike Borderlands 3, the Borderlands 2 level cap increases were in higher level increments, which was preferable, but you also had to pay for them. People like to say the Borderlands 3 Season Pass 2 was some sort of cash grab, but they seem to forget about all of the things that Borderlands 2 charged you for. Level cap increases, ultimate mode, Digistruct Peak, Gage, who was done and ready at launch, by the way, skins and more remember farming for a perfect pimpernel sandhawk and other mission rewards that you can only get once per playthrough if you're a pc player you probably learned the power of read only farming and if you're a console player you probably learned how to dashboard farm or cloud save farm none of those are ideal and in future games i'd love to see these mission rewards get added to an enemy's loot pool so you can go farm for them or like in borderlands 3 have the veteran rewards machine where you can purchase a new mission reward with different roles but unlike in borderlands 3 this needs to extend to dlc content as well Speaking of mission rewards, like the Pimpernel and the Sandhawk, does anybody else not think that it's weird that two blue mission rewards locked to paid content that can be obtained ridiculously easy are the strongest items in Borderlands 2? Especially since Borderlands 2 actually has rarities higher than legendary. And speaking of that, why are pearls generally weaker than most legendary items and those aforementioned mission reward blue items? And why are most of the effervescent items just copies of other items? Like the Nirvana is literally just the Hellfire. The Infection Cleaner is just a slightly stronger baby maker. At least it's stronger, I guess. The Peak Opener is the Kerblaster, but with lower damage, bigger mag, and it does shock instead of explosive damage. Just some weird choices to reuse these guns for this new rarity when you could have made all new ones. I know I complained about visual pollution in my Everything Wrong with Borderlands 3 video, but it was there in Borderlands 2 as well, just not nearly as bad. However, play as Creek sometime with Silence the Voices and let me know how that goes for you. Same can be said for other Vault Hunters at times too. Not nearly as bad as Borderlands 3's visual pollution, I fully agree, but it was still a problem worth mentioning. It also was a problem in other games, so please Gearbox, give us a slider or something to tone down the visual effects. One of my biggest gripes with Borderlands 2 after playing Borderlands 3 for over 5,000 hours is a lack of fast travels on the map. Often it's faster to save and quit to get back close to a door or fast travel otherwise you have to run or drive all the way back across the map this is super duper not ideal i know a lot of you guys love rocket jumping and grenade jumping but i'd love to see future games add better movement options to clear large maps or maybe even just make the map smaller and more interesting borderlands 3 took a step in the right direction with adding things like the snowdrift artifact to help you speed across maps i'd love to see borderlands 4 introduce like maybe a jetpack or grappling hook for as much crap as the suicide squad is getting they absolutely nailed movement and map traversal in that game like i said in my everything wrong with borderlands 3 video one of the main complaints that people have about it is that legendary loot is far too easy to get and it makes normal mode too easy and i agree but can we talk about how almost everybody immediately farms an unkempt herald and fastball in borderlands 2 around level 10 or so and then those carry you to level 20 plus the difference with borderlands 3 is at least you're going to get some variety and probably use some different stuff i'd like to not see super overpowered gear dropping before level 20 in the next game myself the herald should be something you can't get until closer to time to face the warrior in my opinion speaking of levels borderlands 2 still has the problem where gear can drop under leveled if you're farming a b shield at level 80 there's a chance that it'll drop at level 78 why this was a problem at launch on borderlands 3 but luckily within i think it was like a month they fixed that gear should never ever drop under leveled ever especially legendary and pearlescent gear they clearly already had a solution for this problem too as bunker always drops on level loot so take a look at why that works there and apply that to the rest of the game gearbox all right this one's kind of a small issue but we're covering everything anyhow so sometimes you have to set your frame rate down to 30 fps otherwise claptrap gets stuck on the elevator leading to captain flint again small one but it's annoying people like to talk about skill trees in borderlands 3 having broken skills and i am people in this scenario too but Borderlands 2 also has some absolutely worthless skills, and some characters can't seem to do in-game at all without being forced to use other skills. The overall build diversity in Borderlands 2, in my opinion, is the weakest since Borderlands 1. Most Vault Hunters have one viable OP-10 build, melee is completely pointless at OP-10, slag is a necessity for in-game as we covered already, and trying to use non-meta gear is just asking for disaster. And on the topic of meta gear, sadly the majority of Legendary and Pearl 
blessing gear is absolutely useless at the highest difficulties you know where they actually finally start to drop this is not a good system at all again the blue mission rewards are some of the strongest items in borderlands 2 and that's just insane to me why does the warrior and handsome sorcerer have five legendary items in their loot pools along with a head and a generic purple allegiance artifact this absolutely destroys the farming value of this boss forcing you to have to go read only farm him or cloud save farm him making it just a terrible experience this is probably just me nitpicking but i hate the necessity of perfect parts on certain items in borderlands 2 like terrible parts on a b shield makes it pretty horrible terrible parts on a herald can severely hinder your damage output even something as simple as the wrong grip can make reloads feel like they take forever i touched on this earlier but the end game of borderlands 2 is almost exclusively the raid bosses but there are several slaughter maps in the game as well you have finks you have the orchasm you have natural selection annex and you have Merdelin's temple the natural selection annex is paid content but it cannot be repeated at least Merdelin's, arguably the least fun slaughter map has a repeatable final round so you can go fall into spike pits for fun why is there no auto pickup for all in-game currency and all ammo for that matter simple fixes like this exist in the community patch so we know it's fully doable nothing sucks quite like manually picking up a bunch of torque tokens in the barroom brawl or having to go around and try and manually pick up iridium when you have some other green and white items around the loot pool for the raid boss you just killed why do assault rifles have a negative 20 percent crit multiplier this basically renders most assault rifles in the game weaker than all other weapon types in almost every situation why is the you will die mission the terramorphous mission locked to level 50 in normal mode no matter when you beat the story which is almost certainly going to be like level 30 to 35 range you are not going to be able to do this mission in normal mode why why does hyperius's gate still lock you out sometimes sure you killed him once you went out the door now you come back in to kill him again whoops you died you're now locked out guess what you had to go all the way back through that map again that's fun right why do some enemies not respawn even though they have dedicated drops looking at you no beard solely the blacksmith argok and rakanoth especially why does jimmy jenkins not have a legendary loot midget loot pool why does science the voices say that it's a 12 percent chance to hit you in the face when we all know that it's really 100 but only when it's at the worst possible time for you to do it why is cloud kill again i love borderlands 2 just like i love borderlands 3 but i think a final patch for each of these games would be huge so please understand that all of my critiques come from a place of love and i hope that things will get improved what about you guys what do you guys think is wrong with borderlands 2 leave a comment down below also be sure to hit that like button if you agree with any of the points that i made and hit subscribe if you haven't already i cover all things borderlands here on the channel thank you guys for watching take care